months and months of music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song by R5 called Let's Not Be Alone. And it starts out with some really, really cool uh, lead links. And if you want to kind of follow those little arpeggios of, of the chords we'll talk about in a moment, when you can start fifth fret on the high E, seven on the B, and then seven on the G. And we kind of do that twice, kind of that five, seven, seven, five, seven, seven. And then we go to seven on the high E, eighth on the B, and then seven on the G string. And then we go back to the five, seven, seven. So it's almost like a little D chord. Shape for a G chord, and then we go back to kind of a D chord. It's a little weird. You go in five, seven, seven, five, seven, 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 eight, seven, five, seven, seven. So you can kind of dig on that leg. And the chords that would back that would be a D major. And normally, for a D major chord, instead of using this cool shape of the neck, um, you could do first finger on the G string second, second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B third. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, uh, the beautiful sounds a D major. Now, you may also dig on lifting off the second finger. Always a fun finger to lift, and that makes a D sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for D suspended and kind of say some stuff around it. Or you may even dig on using a power chord shape, doing the open D and the second fret on the G string for a D five. Or you could do first finger on the A fifth, third finger on the D seven for a D five power chord. And then from the D, you actually kind of make that change to the seven eight seven back out with a G major chord. And normally you do that first finger on the A second, second finger on the E third, and third finger on the high E third. If you strum all those together, uh, the beautiful sounds of G major. Now you may also dig on putting the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. And that may make that change from the G major to the D major a little bit easier, leaving the third finger down. And that's something I call a guide finger. Kind of you could leave the third finger from the D major to the fourth finger G. And there's a couple different strumming options you may want to think about through the tune, actually. If you're digging on the power chord idea, too, you could use a G5 power chord, kind of that first finger on the new E third, third finger on the A fifth fret for a G5. And it's almost like we do the D for an eight count, and then G for four, and then back to D for four. Kind of working just a down idea. D, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. G, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. Or you could use a strum pattern. One of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 four, four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the D and just tried that a lot to warm up. Yeah, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now the weird part is the G and the D kind of half. So you may want to do just the down, down, up on those chords to kind of half them. Or you could split the pattern and do G with a down, down, up. D with the up, down, up. You can do G with a down, down, and you go to the D for the up, up, down, up. So you kind of dig on working it that way too. And then from there, then we'll be going into our first verse, which kind of repeats that idea. Actually, we kind of start off with the D. First finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, and third finger on the B third, or second fret. It's a big party on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an A major chord. You may also dig on lifting off the third finger and making that an A sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the B third for A suspended and kind of say some stuff around it. Or you may dig on an A seven sus, doing first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second. Third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, kind of using that with the A major. Or you could use an A5 power chord, doing the A, open A, and the second on the D string. Or you may dig on doing that fifth fret on the low E, third finger on the A, seventh fret. So on that last time through, you'd have kind of the D, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the G, A. And sometimes with the downs, actually, I'm kind of digging on this with the halving. You may want to try doing one, two, three on the G, and then one, two, three, four, five on the, on the A. G, two, three, A. It's kind of a little anticipation idea. So you'd have to do G, A, that last time through. Or you could work the down, down, up, up, down, up. G, A. And then 
from there, then we'll be going into our pre-chorus part. In our pre-chorus, we go to an E minor chord. Normally, you do that first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord. It sounds so sad. Now, you may also think I'm putting third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of like an E minor seven for your piece. Or you could do an E five power chord, do an D, B, and an A on the second fret. Or you could do that with first finger on the A, seven, third finger on the D nine for an E five. And it's almost like we have our E for kind of a six count, kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, D for two, and then we do our A for eight, and then our G for eight, and then kind of a big hit on the A at the end. Or if you're digging on the down, down, up, up, down, up, and you want to kind of get in that D, this, this is a little weird. You may want to do down, down, up, up on E minor, and then hit the D with the last down up before you go to the A major. We do a lot of the, the D and then kind of have our G and A. So whatever D, G, A, C, G, A, D, G, A, D, G, A, D, and then kind of the big D, kind of the chorus. And then from there, then we'll be going back into our verse part. Now one other thing I think about adding to the song though is the bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down, of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you throw a bass note in for the chord. So the D you'd have D for the bass, on the G you'd have low E for the bass, on the A you'd have an A for the bass, and on the E minor you'd have low E for the bass. So if you try it that way for the G and D halving, you may want to try kind of a bass down upon each of those chords, or you could add basses and still split the pattern. G with the bass down and then hit the D for the up, up, down, which can be very heavy. So you have the D. that with a bass down up up down up. You have the E minor down up up D A G A. From there then we're going into our next chorus. So we try that with a bass down up up down up. You have a D Come in on our pre chorus progression, kind of our E minor, D, A, G, A. Then we're going to do something that sounds like our chorus, but there's this cool variation where we go to a B minor chord. And normally you would do this, I'm going to call us music we used to do this, but normally you do this as a second fret bar, second finger on the B third, third finger on the D fourth, pinky on the G fourth. And if you strum all those together, Oh, the sad sounds of B minor. Uh, you may also dig on lifting off the pinky and making that a B minor 7. Or another way to play B minor 7. We'll be doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second. That might be a cool option. Or you can use a drone voice for B minor. Kind of first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. You kind of want that for your B minor. Or you may dig on lifting off the pinky and making that a B minor 11. Or if you're digging on the power chords, you may want to do the first finger on the A second, third finger on the D fourth fret for the E five power chord, or you could do the seventh fret on the low E, third finger on the ninth fret for the E five. So it's almost like the B kind of takes the place of the D, and this could be the bass player decided to play a B instead, and you can actually kind of back it up with the D chord. But if we try that all the way through on the B minor chord, you want to be shooting for the A string for the bass. So from where that kind of comes back in, you have the D.
kind of like our chorus. So we got a D. You can strum through. Let's not be alone. R five. So good luck. Hi, wherever you are in YouTube land. This is Munson Summer with Munson Music Live, Munson Guitar Songs, Munson Covers, and Munson Jam Tracks. Thanking you for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see lots more like it. I'm always open to your requests. If you have the song that you love, please let me know so I can write it down on the request list so I can add that to it because there are probably other people out there who love that song too and would love to learn how to play it. So thanks so much for all the love that you give me and I hope that you're doing well and, and kind of figuring out how you can talk with the, the instrument. Um, we are a small music shop in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina and, and you're supporting us by, by watching this channel. Really appreciate all that love. So. Best of luck, and I, I, let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you in, in particular, too. I, you can contact me on Facebook. Um, you can leave a message here in the comments section, and I'm, I, I respond to all the comments that, that I get. So, best of luck to you, wherever you are.